Welcome to the fine print of stainless steel brake lines, an upgrade that is often talked about in the automotive world. First, we're gonna talk about what stainless steel brake lines even do, why you would wanna use them, and kind of an overview of the brake system as a whole. Now you're always gonna hear, oh bro, I, I wanna do some serious brake upgrades so I put stainless steel lines on. Now, there's a ton of manufacturers that make these. You have Goodrich, you have StopTech, Spigler, Endless, and it, it really doesn't matter what brake line that you choose. It's just a matter of understanding what they are and why you would use them. So in this car, it used to have rubber lines, and now it has stainless steel lines that I've installed. And you can see, here's the hard line. So this hard line is, is metal, and it runs from the ABS module to each corner of the car. And then here it terminates and then it goes to a flexible rubber hose. Now, if you look at almost every single car on the market, including high performance cars like Ferrari or Porsches, they use rubber brake lines to the caliper. And one of the reasons why is liability. And the second reason why is serviceability. Stainless steel lines, like many high performance parts, tend to wear out quicker. They are a liability in some cases if you're not constantly doing inspection on them. Well, why is that? Let's talk about it. The big reason for concern with stainless steel lines is the fittings. The, the ends that terminate either into the caliper or into the hard mounting point. Now, stainless steel lines are extremely rigid depending on what brand you get. And if they have a coating, they're even less flexible. Now, if you misinstall these or you don't install them right and there's binding, like I can move this wheel, obviously the brake line moves uh, with the hub, especially on the front. As you turn the wheel, it puts stress on the brake line. Now, some stainless steel lines don't have swivels on the fittings, either at the caliper mounting point or at the hard point, which means the ends will swivel. Like Spigler has swivable stainless lines, which means you'll have less binding problems, installs easier. Some don't swivel at all and basically you have to route it perfect so you know over time if you hit a bump if you have debris and it pulls on the lines all that pressure is on the fitting and if that fitting separates you lose all your brake fluid and you're going to lose control of your car because your brakes aren't going to work that is a huge liability for a manufacturer and you're starting to see similar problems well we've seen similar problems with oil cooler lines on cars you had the ford or the Shelby GT350 with uh, potential fires from the oil cooler line separating. Same thing with the, now the Dodge Charger Hellcat has a recall on the oil cooler lines. Lotus had separation problems with their lines and this is why so many manufacturers aren't using liquid oil coolers because there is a high probability of failure with them if you're not inspecting them or if they're missing or if they're not installed properly. Stainless steel brake lines carry the same liability as that. Now we already know rubber brake lines from the termination point to the calipers are tried and true. They've been used forever. They're on millions of cars. The failure rate is so low, you just don't have to worry about it. So why would you add the level of complication or anxiety of doing this? Why would I do it when I'm basically telling you not to do it? Well, here's why you would add a stainless steel line. 99% of it is for track driving, for competition level driving. When you're on a racetrack and you're getting up to 100 plus miles an hour and you slam on those brakes, this caliper is clamping down on the disc. And as it's clamping down on the disc, you're generating heat throughout this disc, which transfers into the brake pad, which transfers into the hub, into the back of the caliper, into this line. And then of course the byproduct is that heat gets into the brake fluid. And as that brake fluid heats up to four, five, 600 degrees Fahrenheit, what happens with hot brake fluid? Well, it expands the rubber line that you have if you don't have a stainless steel line. Now on a track, when you're coming into a corner flat out and you have to nail those brakes, if there's expansion in a rubber hose, it will create a little bit of mushiness in your brake pedal. And it might be slight enough to either one, throw off your confidence or two, make you wanna back off because you're not sure if there's a problem. So putting a stainless line on reduces or almost eliminates that expansion of this hose that's here or that brake fluid expanding a line. That's why you would get rid of 
a, a rubber line. But the reality is this is not something you're going to experience on a streetcar. If you're on a, if you don't take it to the track and you're not doing competition level driving where, you know, seconds or milliseconds matter in a lap, it's just almost pointless to do. The second reason why you do a stainless line is, well, they're more, res they're more resistant to shearing or puncture. Again, this is almost exclusively a track problem. If you're going 140 miles an hour and somebody's uh, a bolt or uh, a dust shield or some a wheel weight flies off and it flies up into your wheel well, it can shear a brake line or cut it if you have a rubber hose. That's not something that is as likely on a stainless steel line. So those are two of the primary benefits of running a stainless line and almost none of that is going to benefit you on a streetcar. And it's certainly not enough to warrant the added, well, checklist of things to do with a car like this. Now, like anything, companies want to sell products. And obviously you can see I have StopTech rotors, I have CarboTech brake pads, and I have endless brake lines here. It doesn't mean that it's bad or you should steer away from it. You should just know how things operate. And that is the fine print of stainless steel brake lines.